Hi, this is Lock Connection. I'm going to show you how to sync your phone to this Bluetooth lock. This is our KRS80LC-BT. Um, same instructions go for our fingerprint lock. It's fingerprint and Bluetooth. Um, so both of these would operate the same way. On the lock, it's going to have a serial number right here, 32. Typically, the pin number is going to be right above that. Right now I have the pin number on the side here. Should also let you know on this specific lock, it is RFID. So this one comes with two user cards. Two user cards. The user cards are already programmed to the lock. All you have to do is add batteries and you're good to go with the user card. User cards work through about 1.5 inch thick wood. Um, and as you can see, the striker inside of there or shaft moves in and out. The You also get one manager card. The manager card only puts it in program mode. So when you scan it, goes in program mode, the light flashing green indicates it's in pro program mode. You'll notice when I scan it, it, the shaft never moves. The card is only used to add other user cards or delete cards from the lock at the lock level. So, with that said, <clears throat> let me show you how to set this up. So you have two potential apps. I'm using an iPhone right now, but you can same app in Androids as well as iOS. You have the admin app, the administrator app, and then you also have a user app. So the admin app has all of the... Um, Things on the phone that you can change. Uh, you can change the sound. You can add users, delete users, things like that. It has all the all the functions in the app to do it. You can have that admin app on two different phones. So if you want you and your wife to have um, the administrative app on both your phones, that's fine. You can both use the same username and password and operate the phone, uh, obviously, independently. You can't do it at the exact same time. Uh, the lock can still only connect to one phone at a time, but you can both use the same app. You don't have to have someone else have the user app um, if you don't want. The user app is only used for people you do not want to have full access to the lock. So if you don't want them to be able to add users, subtract users, change physical details about the lock, um, they would download the user app. A lot of people use this for um, houses and vacation homes, things like that. There's a setting in here where you can give access to the lock um, through the user app for one week or one day or three days or whatever you want um, to a specific phone. And then after that time, it goes away and they can't use it anymore. So I'm going to just show you how to set everything up. So the lock connection admin is right there. So you would just search for it on the Play Store or um, Android store, uh, lock connection admin. The other one, the user, you could look for lock connection user will come up. Serial number on this one was three, two. So basically, um, what you do I should say is hit this to search for the phone right now. It's not connected to anything. Search for the phone. You would push this green link here. That pulls up all the phone, all the things that are in range of my phone. So as I mentioned, the serial number was three two. So I'm going to push that. It's going to. Hi, this is Jeff Walker with Lock Connection. Today I'm going to show you how to connect your Apple phone, your iPhone, to our Bluetooth app. So this one is one of our Bluetooth locks. You can see the part number KR-SADLC-BT. Anything that says BT. And our part number string is Bluetooth, and you can connect it to Android or um, or iPhones, Apples. This video is going to show you how to do Apples because the app uh, requires you to do some stuff on your phone settings manually to get it to work. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to download the app, um, the Lock Connection Admin app.
And there it is. So you'll download it. <coughs> you'll open it up. So it's going to ask you a couple questions. Lock connection. Lock LC admin would like to use your Bluetooth, so you'll always hit allow. This is the second screen here. The LC admin would like to use Bluetooth for new connections. So you have to go to your settings here. If you hit close, it's going to take you to um, to the phone and the phone actually, or when you go to the app, it's not actually going to pull up any Bluetooth device. So you have to go to your settings. If you don't do it now, you have to do it later. Then once you click on settings, it's going to pull up this screen here. And you can see right here, it says allow new connections. You have to push that and make sure your Bluetooth is on and then push allow new connections. Then once you do the new connections, it's going to look like this. It's not going to have that there anymore. Then we're going to go to the app. When you go to the app, you're going to hit the first button there, search device. When you click that, it's going to pull up all the devices, all Bluetooth devices that are in range. And I'm just going to show you the serial number on this one. The last three digits are 578. So when we look on here, this first one is 578. So we're going to go ahead and push that. It's going to pop up this screen here and ask for the lock pin ID number. So the pin is on the side, 1924. Hit confirm. And it's going to ask for the your phone number you want to bind it to. Now, most people use their real phone number because it's easy to remember, but you can put any number in here you want. The only difference is if you use your real phone number and you share access to a user, it will actually give you the ability right through the app to send them a text message with their password. Um, otherwise, you would have to do it manually. But so for right now, I'm just going to use a fake number. So I'm just going to use 888-111. 2222. So I still use a 10 digit number. Hit confirm. It's going to ask for the admin passcode. When you first get it, the first person who uses it will always put in six zeros. Hit confirm. Uh, hit confirm. It's going to say authentication successful and basically it's ready to go. It says it's connected. 61% is my battery life. It shows the serial number right there. So when I push it, the lock will open. It goes green to indicate that it's open. Now it's red, indicating that it's locked. I have this on auto close mode. So when I push it, it opens. Five seconds later, it locks on its own. You can also change that to um, push to open and push to close. There's a setting on there. I'll show you in a second. So you can see. Every time I push this, it reads the voltage at that specific point in time. So I'm at 25%. When this gets lower, usually about 12 to 13%, I change out the batteries. The batteries usually last about six months, depending on how long you use it and some of the other settings you have in it. Um, I'm going to show you some of that stuff now. First, I'll show you if you push on the silhouette, it shows you the number your basically username, um, the unlocking authority, who did I give permission to this lock? Nobody right now, so nobody's in there. The current version, so it gives you the software version. Those will update automatically. I'm going to go back to the lock. So here, once again, you can go up, hit the three buttons up there. This gives you all the things you can do. The locking mode, that's where you can change it to manual. If you don't want it to lock automatically, push that manual. And you have to hit the lock to open it, hit the lock to close it. Record query, this shows how many times the lock was open and closed. What time it was, the person, basically the username who did it. And it says if that person is an admin, if I had a user on here, it would say user. Um, disable the buzzer. So if I don't want it to make that beeping sound when I open it, you can disable the buzzer. So basically, let me go back here. Now when I hit it, it doesn't make that beeping sound at all. 
So I'm just going to go back and change that. So you'll hear it just buzzed. The cancel alarm, that is an emergency alarm. So basically when this striker, if a striker is not engaged in the lock, so theoretically if the lock is not locked, every 45 seconds it's going to give a 15 second um, solid beep until the striker gets engaged into the lock. Right now I have it off. If I want to turn it on, it will be making that beep even as I do this. It gets kind of annoying, so I usually shut that off. Plus, it does use the battery fairly quickly, um, so it, it reduces the life of the battery. Some other things you can do on here, emergency unlock. Right now, this does not do anything. We're looking into whether we can, if there's an issue, we can send, you can send a, basically ask for a user a user code, and we can send that to you um, to open it. So basically, if you would lose your phone and lose your um, lose your user cards, you could ask for it. This may or may not happen in the future, but we have it on there for now. Modify the password. So if you want to change your password, you can do it right here. Original password was six zeros. You can make it anything you want. You would hit submit. Just make sure you remember your password. Um, adding a user, basically hit the plus button right here. You, once again, you would add their user, their phone number. Um, I'm just going to make a fake number again. So I'm going to use twos this time. This is where you can say, Hey, when do you want them to start using it? I'm just going to say yesterday, <clears throat> you could leave it on today or whatever. Whenever you put it, just make sure you hit the confirm button. End time. So when do you want them to not have access to the lock? So you can make that seven days out. You can make that years out. Um, I'm just going to put 2042. Always make sure you hit the confirm button. Then I'm going to add it. it. Says it created successfully. It says do you want to send a message? If I hit send, it would send them a. It would pull up a text message and say, "Here's their password. Go ahead and hit send." But since I have a fake number in there and my number was fake, it's not going to do anything. So I'll just hit cancel. You can go back here and now it pulls up the, the username basically, which is their phone number and their password. So their password right now is 386452. So <clears throat> if you wanted to delete that user, Go into delete. You would push their information because you have could have multiple. Then you would hit the delete button. Um, but I'm not going to delete it right now. So that's how you do that. Um, it's pretty much all the information on on that. I'm going to try to use the same phone with the user with a different number. Sometimes it gets messed up. But I'm going to try it anyway. So basically, once again, because I'm in the user app now, totally different app than the admin app. It asks for what lock. Once again, it's 32. It says, okay, what's your PIN? 1942. Or 1924. 1924. What's your mobile number? Basically, what's the password you use, or the your username you used? I used all twos. And then it says, what's your password? It was 386452. Hit confirm. And it actually um, logged me in. Here you could change your password right away if you wanted. Um, when a user changes the password, the admin app always shows that new user password on it. So if the user forgets their password, they can always just call the uh, person who's the administrator on the lock. That person can look at it and say, this is your password. I'm just going to cancel right now. So now the lock works um, for the user. No issues. You can see when you go into that three button thing, there's very little things that they can do. They can modify their password as I already showed. We also have that emergency unlock right now. 
um, we're probably going to take it off of the user. Um, there's probably no reason a user needs to have that. Right now, it doesn't do anything anyway. The only thing they can cancel, they can shut off that alarm, the emergency alarm that goes on and off every 45 seconds. Um, other than that, there's nothing that they can do to to change. They can't change any other settings on here. And so that would be it. So I'm going to try and go back to this app. Um, <clears throat> since I'm using a phone, it goes back and it makes me want to redo everything since I'm using the same phone. Typically, you won't have that because you're not using the same app on both phones. So anyway, that's pretty much how you add users, delete users, and gives you a little bit of functionality how to do it. If there's any questions, you can always contact us. Um, our phone number is on our website. You can go to lockconnection.net. We also have a lot of different hardware, drawer slides, shocks, dampers, LED lights, regular cam locks, standoffs, things like that. Um, we'd love to work with you guys in the future. Thank you. Have a good day.